targeting HIV replication. The replication of HIV-1 is a multi-stage process. Each step is crucial to successful replication and is therefore a potential target of antiretroviral drugs. Step one is the infection of a suitable host cell, such as a CD4 positive T lymphocyte. Entry of HIV into the cell requires the presence of certain receptors on the cell surface. CD4 receptors and co-receptors such as CCR5 or CXCR4. These receptors interact with protein complexes, which are embedded in the viral envelope. These complexes are composed of two glycoproteins, an extracellular GP120 and a transmembrane GP41. When HIV approaches a target cell, GP120 binds to the CD4 receptors. This process is termed attachment. It promotes further binding to a co-receptor. Co-receptor binding results in a conformational change in GP120. This allows GP41 to unfold and insert its hydrophobic terminus into the cell membrane. GP41 then folds back on itself. This draws the virus towards the cell and facilitates the fusion of their membranes. The viral nucleocapsid enters the host cell and breaks open, releasing two viral RNA strands and three essential replication enzymes. Integrase, protease, and reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase begins the reverse transcription of viral RNA. It has two catalytic domains, the ribonuclease H active site and the polymerase active site. Here, single-stranded viral RNA is transcribed into an RNA-DNA double helix. Ribonuclease H breaks down the RNA. The polymerase then completes the remaining DNA strand to form a DNA double helix. Now, integrase goes into action. It cleaves a dinucleotide from each three prime end of the DNA, creating two sticky ends. Integrase then transfers the DNA into the cell nucleus and facilitates its integration into the host cell genome. The host cell genome now contains the genetic information of HIV. Activation of the cell induces transcription of proviral DNA into messenger RNA. The viral messenger RNA migrates into the cytoplasm, where building blocks for a new virus are synthesized. Some of them have to be processed by the viral protease. Protease cleaves longer proteins into smaller core proteins. This step is crucial to create an infectious virus. Two viral RNA strands and the replication enzymes then come together and core proteins assemble around them, forming the capsid. This immature viral particle leaves the cell, acquiring a new envelope of host and viral proteins. The virus matures and becomes ready to infect other cells. HIV replicates billions of times per day, destroying the host's immune cells and eventually causing disease progression. Drugs which interfere with the key steps of viral replication can stop this fatal process. Entry into the host cell can be blocked by fusion inhibitors, for example. Inhibition of reverse transcriptase by nucleoside inhibitors or by non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors is part of standard antiretroviral regimens. The action of integrase can be blocked. Protease inhibitors are also part of standard antiretroviral therapy. 
Each blocked step in viral replication is a step towards better control of HIV disease. Every breath in gives oxygen for our whole body. Each breath out provides carbon dioxide to gases exchanging. Each breath in your mouth and nose and goes oxygen. Pass the pharynx, pass the top of the epiglottis. Your voice box there instead of the trachea divides. Air enters the lungs in the primary bronchi In the bronchial tree, oxygen keeps on traveling See, deep in the bronchioles, two air clusters sacs called Sacs called the violi, with capillaries on the outside Blood takes up the oxygen, drops off its CO2 as then Two gases exchange In lungs, the trachea gets spongy for the purpose of exchanging gases through your blood It's the oxygen carries from your lung through your body Then releases waste of CO2 gases Breathe out Inside of the nebulous, the exchange of gases that burns. Each molecule of oxygen diffuses into a capillary, enters the blood from the plasma to the RPC. That's the red blood cells, oxygen binding with heme, part of the hemoglobin protein to make oxyhemoglobin complete. Then, then the carbon dioxide blood drops off a waste of gas, goes the other direction. From the blood aviol eye back up to the bronchi, travel up to the trachea. Larynx, pharynx, then the final area Exiting nasal oral cavity All of that happens every single time you breathe in the diaphragm helps you breathe Properly your lungs muscle underneath When you breathe in it contracts Move down so your lungs can expand Your rib bones protecting Intercostal muscles in between each Also helps lungs expand and condense Out for these muscles surrounding Two gases exchange in lungs, the trachea gets spongy, oxygen respiratory, for the purpose of exchanging gases through your blood. It's the oxygen carries from your lung to your body, then releases waste of CO2 gases. Breathe out. Fresh air entering the lungs carries oxygen to the alveoli. The amount of gas in air or of gas dissolved in a fluid can be expressed as partial pressure, which is measured in millimeters of mercury. The partial pressure of oxygen in the air within the alveoli is 104 millimeters of mercury. Carbon dioxide that enters the alveoli from the blood causes the carbon dioxide concentration in the air of the alveoli to be 40 millimeters of mercury. Carbon dioxide is continually removed from the alveoli as air is expired. Blood coming from the heart at the arterial ends of the pulmonary capillaries has a partial pressure of oxygen, or PO2, of 40 and a PCO2 of 45. Therefore, oxygen diffuses from the air in the alveoli into the blood and carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveoli because of these differences in partial pressures. Oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse until there is no difference in partial pressure in the air and the blood. At this point, there is no more net movement of O2 or CO2. Therefore, at the venous ends of the pulmonary capillaries, the PO2 in the blood and alveoli is 104, and the PCO2 in the blood and alveoli is 40. Some oxygen was removed from the blood to nourish lung tissue. Therefore, the PO2 in arterial blood leaving the heart is 95. Oxygen diffuses out of the arterial ends of tissue capillaries into the tissue fluid, then into the cells, and carbon dioxide diffuses out of the cells into the tissue fluid then into the blood because of differences in partial pressures. 
At the venous ends of tissue capillaries, the PO2 in the blood is equal to the PO2 in the tissue fluid, and the PCO2 in the blood is equal to the PCO2 in the tissue fluid, resulting in no more net movement of O2 or CO2. The blood now carries the O2 and CO2 to the lungs. In the body, all of these exchanges occur simultaneously. The T4 phage initiates infection of an E. coli bacterium by recognizing cell surface receptors of the host with its long tail fibers. A recognition signal is sent through the long tail fibers to the base plate. This unravels the short tail fibers that bind irreversibly to the E. coli cell surface. The base plate changes conformation and the tail sheath contracts causing GP5 at the end of the tail tube to puncture the outer membrane of the cell. The lysosome domain of GP5 is activated and degrades the periplasmic peptidoclecan layer. The remaining part of the membrane is degraded and DNA from the head of the phage can travel through the tail tube and enter the E. coli. After the life cycle is complete, the host cell bursts open and ejects the newly built viruses into the environment, destroying the host cell. All your bones inside you call the skeletal system Giving you strength and structure so that you won't flop around And each bone got a function, there are 206 of them Seventy percent of each bone is made from calcium Sound like Tuscan The cranium protects the brain, the man Double Jaw to Fuki, peep in place, the cleft Thickle The collarbone, there's two of them Leaves the scapula, sternum, cartilage You're hot, protected, and it's fat Sternum, that bone connects your ribs to repair a crew that's just so long to not a protected Humorous bone from your shoulder to elbow Your forearm is your owner and your thumbs are great in your spawn Vertebrates, vertebrates, skeletal bones Ligaments and tendons connect muscles That's our production and storing calcium Vertebrates, vertebrates, skeletal bones Ligaments and tendons connect muscles And they're quick controlling how about your hands, the carpals, all the bones in your wrist The metacarpals, all our wrists and fingers connected Phalanges, the small bones in your toes and your fingers And in your foot is also the talus and calcineus vertebral Column, the spine to support standing straight The cervical, the top seven vertebrae bottom Thumber, and the thoracic in the middle And your pelvic girdle connects your upper and lower body together And femur, your upper leg bone Supporting with the strongest, longest and heaviest of all To protect your knees, small bone, the patella The inner thicket tibia, outside is the fibula and one Vertebrates, vertebrates, skeletal bones Ligaments and tendons connect muscles That's our production and storing calcium Vertebrates, vertebrates, skeletal bones Ligaments and tendons connect muscles And they're quick controlling